Hello everyone, I'm Susie and welcome back to Read Susie Read. Today I'm here to share with you the 14 books that I currently have checked out from the library. Since there are so many of them, let's jump right into the books. The first book is the book that I'm currently reading and it is Family by J. California Cooper. I mentioned this in the books I might read in February as part of the Read Soul Lit and Black History Month project. The writing is quite simple and the text is quite large, but I'm only about 32 pages in because I'm taking my time with this one because the content inside is kind of emotionally difficult to read. While stylistically it's very easy to read, I'm getting a lot out of this one and I look forward to finishing this in the month of February. Next, out from Interlibrary Loan, I have The Book of Strange New Things by Michelle Faber. I would describe this as a science fiction novel. It's about a young missionary who is called to another planet to spread the word of God. Meanwhile, back on Earth, the planet's kind of going downhill, and he's corresponding with his young wife who's asking him to come back and be with her while the world seems to be ending. So he's faced with the struggle of carrying out his mission to spread the word of God or be with the love of his life. This, unfortunately, I think is due before the end of February, which I'm trying to devote to Black History Month, but hopefully I can renew this one, otherwise this one will be one that I'll need to purchase in the future. Next up from Interlibrary Loan, I have In the Night Garden by Catherine M. Valente, which you may recognize that name because she's the author of the Fairyland series, which I read the first two books of last year. I absolutely fell in love with her writing style, and I actually know very little about this. I do figure that it's got some fairy tale esque aspects to it, and I picked this up off of the recommendation of Stephen from Steve Reed's books. Next, I have Just Kids by Patti Smith, which is a memoir about her young creative life in New York with photographer Robert Mablethorpe. Really, I've wanted to read this book since I remember seeing it whenever it came out, I think in 2010. And I even almost purchased this book secondhand years ago, but I put it back for some stupid reason. But since it's come back into my attention numerous times, thanks to Ashley from Climb the Sex, I finally picked it up from the library. I've had it out for quite a while, but I'm still equally excited to read it. Speaking of recommendations from Ashley, I picked up A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. I haven't read anything by Virginia Woolf, and this may end up being the first piece of literature that I read by her, but it's a piece of nonfiction where she explores the idea of why men may have more power because they have spaces of their own to work in and the importance of a young independent woman or a woman in general to have a space to call their own. Again, I have had this one checked out for quite some time, but I'm still equally excited about it and I hope to get to it very soon. <laughs> and yet again, another recommendation from Ashley from Climb the Stacks is A Year of Magical Thinking by Joan Didion. This is a piece of nonfiction dealing with the loss of her husband in the year that she deals with the grief of losing her husband. and. Again, I've had this checked out for quite some time, but something about the way that I've heard it described is very appealing to me, and I'm still equally excited about it. I know that it will be a hard read, but I've been really yearning for something quite genuinely emotional, so I think that this will definitely hit that spot. Just hope that I can get to it before I have to return it to the library. Next, we have The Color Purple by Alice Walker. Again, this is another one that I mentioned in the books I might read in February for Black History Month. I think that I incorrectly described this book when I talked about it in that video. I'm actually not quite sure what it's about. I know that it's about two sisters and that it's written in letter format and I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm actually kind of excited to watch the film adaptation after I read this book. Now on to Zim Young Adult. I haven't read any Young Adult in a while, or at least it feels like a while, and I still really enjoy it. So. Hopefully in the near future I can scratch that itch with some of these books. The first one is Ferris by Marissa Meyer. It is a prequel to the Lunar Chronicles and tells the story of pretty much the villain or the evil queen in the main series. It's quite a short book which was kind of surprised to see because a lot of her other books except for maybe Cinder are quite long. I am really looking forward to this because it's been a while since I've read the Lunar Chronicles and I didn't love the third installment crest as much as everyone else seemed to so I'm hoping that this will revive my love for it before the last book, Winter, comes out later this year. Next is All the Bright Things by Jennifer Niven. I actually know pretty much nothing about this book, but I picked it up off of the recommendation of my friend Katrina from Little Book Owl, and I also heard that Dylan from Dylan's books absolutely raved about this book as well. It just seems like a really well-written and thought-provoking young adult contemporary novel that I'm really looking forward to, and I kind of like the idea of going into this one knowing very little. Next, I have Bells Are by Meg Waltzer. I've had this one checked out for quite some time. Again, I'm equally excited to read it. It's kind of a play on The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. The characters within the book, I believe, read Sylvia Plath's The Bell Jar, but it also has a lot of similar tones and themes in it. The blurb on the back is from Jacqueline Woodson, and it really sold me, so if you don't mind, I'm going to read that to you now. It's been a long while since a book has pulled me in this way. I read it leaning forward, literally on the edge of my seat, with my heart in my throat. 
I had no idea what was coming, but I was hungry to get there. So subtly plotted and painfully beautiful, I couldn't put it down. Meg Waltzer is an amazing storyteller. So really looking forward to this one. Hopefully I can get to it soon. <laughs> and the last young adult book that I have checked out from the library is Falling Into Place by Amy Zhang. This was one that was on my radar, but I had kind of forgotten about until my friend Jossie made a video about this, which I will hopefully remember to link down below. It is about a young girl who decides that she's going to commit suicide by driving her car off of the road or off of a cliff, but I don't think that it's successful. And she compared this to If I Stay by Gail Foreman, which I loved a couple of years ago, revisited last year, and thought that it was okay. But Jossie said that they did that trope that If I Stay does much better. So I'm really looking forward to finding out if that's true. The last three books I'm only going to mention briefly because I think I mentioned them in my last video where I talked about books that I checked out from the library. I still have What We Talk About When We Talk About Love by Raymond Carter, which is a collection of short stories, a very famous one in that, and I'm re-inspired to read this because the movie Birdman touches on Raymond Carter's work, specifically I think this collection, so that's really interesting and I think that I would get more from the movie after reading this collection. Then we have When Women Were Birds by Terry Tempest Williams. Dictionopolis did an excellent video on this book and has re-inspired me to pick it up. Hopefully I will pick it up before I renew it for the hundredth time. And last but certainly not least we have Gilead by Marilyn Robinson. This is a Pulitzer Prize winner. It's, I think it's epistolary novel and I hear them rave about it infinitely <laughs> on the Book Riot podcast. So hopefully this is one that I'll get to again before I have to renew it for the hundredth time. And those are all of the books that I currently have checked out from the library. Fortunately, I have a little bit of a power abuse in the renewal process since I work there, but hopefully I get to some of these in the near future. Most certainly we'll finish family. And that's all that I have to share with you today. As always, please feel free to share your thoughts on any of the books that I mentioned here today in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you soon with a new video.